Today our chapter is this one. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Today I'd like to talk about, it is called Bethesda, which is the prime time. You may hear about the name of Paul, the Bible. It is called Bethesda. In Korean, Bethesda Yonmot. When I was uh, your age, um, I grew up um, you know, in Seoul. I was born in Seoul, actually. My, my parents actually born in the Chungcheong, you know, Bukdo area. And that's why I really uh, like the Hanwha Eagles all the time. You know? <laughs> so, but are uh, they getting better, by the way? So this year, I hope that uh, they can make it, uh, you know, playoff season. Um, you know, the, uh, as a actually Korean person and male, um, and also middle class, you know, status uh, from actually my parents actually, and uh, it's such a great privilege uh, status, I believe, because um, you know a lot of opportunities, uh, learning, experiencing, even the um, you know working, you know this great opportunities, you know I experience actually uh, also it is such a blessing, and then one of the blessings uh, what I had uh, in my life is uh, you know grow up in the you know good you know education you know environment in you know, a town and area which is called, uh, people say Gangnam. I grew up in Gangnam uh, from the elementary to high school, even the college freshman year. And I grew up, you know, 흔히 말하는 대치동 area. You know, my time was uh, not many hot ones, but a lot of, you know, kids, they are taking actually, uh, it is called private tutorings. And uh, a lot of money, you know, parents, they're willing to spend. And why? One reason, it is called college. A lot of people, they want to go to good college, name, ranking, driven college all the time. And I remember the freshman in high school, I went to pu public school, but it's kind of sort of private school. And uh, first day, my homeroom teacher said, you guys now freshman year, which is you know, high school. So now you're able to study harder. Now then you're going to get accepted at least sky universities. Sky means Seoul and Yonsei, Korea, Korea universities. And they give us a lot of hopes. Everyone feel that, wow, I will be able to go to, you know, good colleges. And next day, I remember, nice, like, looks like handsome, and they actually wear the, like, you know, jacket. Like, my time was, we had to wear the, how about the short haircut? And then, the, like, like this much. And then the teachers, they're waiting in front of the gate for all students, how they grab the, it is called tennis rocket. And then, wow, well, then they check the, okay, yes, sir, come over here. And then they, in order to measure our length of the hair, they put it on our hair. And if any hair is like come out from the net, then what, the immediately said, you gotta pull over here, over there, and then what, start, push up, or bring the seizures and cut it off. I shared this one experience with one of the teachers today while having their lunch. It was a mock test time. It was for college national exam. And I was sitting, actually I was a number one, actually, in person. 3학년 일반 일반. So I was a, the senior because I was smart. No, it was uh, actually randomly <laughs> they select. And then I remember I came back to the, I joined the class the first day late. And then right next to the door I was sitting because I was late. And the teacher, the hormone teacher, look at around and let's make the uh, number. And he look around. Okay, Rina is the number one. That, that was me. So I was a number one person, which is 3학년 일반 일반. So, you know, I was sitting here, which is a one, two, three, four. That's a, there are about six, uh, 65 students. 65 students, more than this number actually. And one class size is my elementary school, 73. And then middle and high school, 65, 68, something like that. And I was sitting here, and P teacher came to the, was a, the classroom with the uh, trash can, with the seizure. And he said, all right, let me check your hair. And then the, he looked at me, oh, there, you're pretty longer. And then what? He cut off my hair with the trash can. The trash can. And then all students got a haircut. And then we, we had a huge bomb here. And next day, and then one, one of our friends, 
Actually, I had to go to the you know barbershop, of course. But one of my friends, he came in with just a bomb here, and then like it looks like you got bombed. Yeah, it's cold. And then the, he got cut by the same teacher. You didn't go to a barbershop? Then let, let me have another bomb. And then he made another bomb here, three bomb. And next day he got really ticked off. And then what he did? He shaved his hair like you know, do so much. And then the teacher really upset. Why you did? He said, "I remember about 30 years ago, because I am so hot." <laughs> That's what he uh, said. Uh, anyway, it's such a tra- tragedy. I'm serious. Like really, really um, unexpected dramas we had every single day, even from the morning. And I said, "I hate school. Go to school like, wow, really stressful." They, every single moment, I have to bow to my some better seniors. It's like mandatory. If not, that they beat me up. All the you know, even teachers, they beat us up. Why? Because because their emotion sometimes really upset. They come here. To the, what is today? Seventeen. All right, number seventeen. Come up here and then answer the question. A lot of things. And said, you need to go to Sky. Okay. Why we have to go? Because it looks like cold and senior some better. Next few weeks later, they come here and then they said, "How I got accepted Seoul National University? Wow! All the students look at them as a stars, huge like you know model students and respect and really jealous all the time. I remember. And then we, after the meeting, that we just you know came to them and they asked this question." Would you tell me more secrets how you got accepted Seoul National University? This is the way how I grew up, and then, and then you know, becoming uh, the, let's say a uh, Yi, which is the, um, the uh, maybe junior year, no, uh, junior year, and uh, our expectation about college is getting bad. So we expect it as a Goyil, which is like, at least we could study harder than, you know, go to the Seoul National University. But Goyi, we realize our academic abilities, performances, is not good. So maybe our goal is at least accepted university in Seoul, not Seoul National University. University in Seoul. And people are expecting this expectation and study harder, but not really. Go to the uh, private university, the, the second floor. Until 2 a.m. I remember, I came back from school about 10 p.m. and then immediately I went to private library until 2 a.m. I had only about four hours sleep, just sleep four hours. And next day, my mom just prepared about lunch box. How many? Two or three. Can you imagine? This is 365 days. You do live like this way. With this, just one hope, going to good college, and it became senior year. One of my teachers, a homeroom teacher, actually, uh, he just called uh, each student have a uh, having counseling. I remember first day, and he called me number one, Imi no, to come up here, and I said, and he asked me a personal question. Then what would be your future major? And I said, you know, no hesitation. I said, I like to study history. I would like to apply to uh, college with a history major. Really? And he was kind of surprised. I thought um, he surprised. He was surprised by my maybe a clear decision or maybe goal. Not really. Next com- comment from him is this one. Then you're not going to make money. That's what he said. History major <laughs> maybe get, a, get accepted maybe Better than other, maybe a more competitive majors, such as my medical, bio, or some, you know, some majors. But history majors, uh, I don't think you're going to get a job. That's what he made. I mean, the man that gave me the comment. That's such a kind of frustration. And then I studied. But my outcome, academic performance, wasn't that good all the time. But not that bad, but compared to Sky University, it's not so when I applied to college, um, actually I applied to Yonsei and uh, history major. But you know my my uh, teacher said maybe it would be impossible 
get accepted because uh, your math score is not good. That's what he told me. So I, that's why those who are really good at math, I really envy you guys. Um, <laughs> but I really good at, I was all the time good at histories. That's why I do not, do not understand those who are really bad at histories. So yeah, yeah. So, um, so remember, okay? 역사 잘하셔야 돼요. Senior year, um, when I uh, take the, uh, took the uh, national college exam, like this way, seriously. It's like inter dorm, like it looks like the COVID-19, we take the virus, you know, vaccine, right? So we're sitting here, and uh, I remember um, a lot of kids, uh, you know, they in praying and uh, also, you know, so desperate. So um, I, I, I also, I was one of them, and they pray too. And, but I start to think about this question. Only 50 students got accepted, will get accepted, but about 300 people taking exam. Then about 50 students, are they really willing to take or study history or name driven? Once again, are they really prefer, it is called major driven or name Yonsei University driven? That was the question what I had in the uh, you know, test center. Of course, uh, actually, um, the test result was not good, so I failed. And then I had to study another year. It is called Jesu, Jesu Seng. And Jesu Seng uh, That's why I learned about how miserable Jesu life. And then that's kind of between the college student or the Gosam. It's like, it is called like isolated their status. So I don't belong to any society status, actually. So I you know, had to just study, 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 but I fail again. So two times college, you know, failure experiences, and then I felt I'm a loser. You know, it's like I don't belong to any colleges, even you know, I cannot apply to any you know, Sky Universities. And a few weeks later, my pastor, actually youth pastor, uh, encouraged me. You, you shared with me, you know, a long time ago, you want to go to a seminary, which is the Bible college. And he encouraged me that, oh, why don't you go, you know, apply. Then uh, I was in prayer, and then I decided, okay, then uh, I'd like to study the Bible, then apply to seminary, which is the Bible college. And same situation, about 50 people, but about, uh, I remember, 250, the people, they, uh, you know, took the other exam. Same day. Guess what? How they started. Everyone are the Christians. Everyone confessed that I want to be a pastor. 250 people. But only 50 people will get accepted. That situation made me really, really kind of upset. Why? I told myself that God is not fair. There are about 250 people who love God and become pastors but why only 50 people will get accepted in this competition? And the professor, which is the doctor, the proctor, came here and then he started encouraging us, let's pray together. God will bless you, take the good exam. And then all students cry, start to cry. Wisdom, wisdom. And all students, except me, I was going to open my eyes and look at this one. And I was really serious that why they crying and why only two only 50 people and after the exam i was in confidence of it was like better of uh, the result i felt that so and a few weeks later you know that time no internet which means we had to visit the campus actually the you know the field and they you know, put the, uh, the you know huge whiteboard and put in the all uh, the accepted you know the list actually the students it's kind of a miserable situation because uh, I was really happy, but right next to me, some people were crying. Right after the written test, the uh, next day, we had an interview. And the interview time, too. The person right, next, uh, right in front of me, that she was really faithful and confident to say that I want to be a pastor. So that's why I applied to this college and trying to persuade or uh, interview the what's called professors and then what? Is give them more points. Then, the, you know, one of the interviewers actually asked me uh, this question, why you apply to this college? Then I was the only one said this one, because I want to study the Bible. 
I was the I was the only one who said this word. Everyone said missionary, missionaries, pastors, so you know, God's workers, all the servants, something like that. More, it's like you know, God's you know more. Uh, let's say uh, you know, servants. And a few weeks later, except us, you know, the least day. I mean, we found out they went to the college, and it was on the hill. One lady coming down toward the gate, I found out, figured out, she was right in front of me, the person. And then I saw, I remembered her face was crying and miserable. And all the dark, you know, side remains her face. I figured out she got rejected. And I saw the, in the whiteboard my name, actually. I was not that happy. Because 200 people got rejected. And, you know, next few weeks you know, later, and I joined the first class of the, my Bible class, and then I didn't start to, seriously, uh, I, was, I, I was really disappointed by the result because God is not fair. In this competition, why only 50 people, you know, got accepted? And guess what? And 10 years later, 10 years later, the 50 people, among 50 my classmates, only 10% people, they are now became pastors, which means what? Only five people became pastors. Now another question is this one. Where are 45 students? They are them right now. Where are they right now? What about 200 students who got rejected by the national, the Bible college exams? Well, we are in now competition in this all the time situation, guys. You're heading toward, no, the, regardless of a Korean college national exam, maybe the US or SAT scores, or other European or Australian, Japan, you know, China, any nations, colleges, competitions exist any location, any places. Which means, We've been stressed out with this goal. Well, what is it? Only few students will get accepted or selected or successful in this competition. My question is this one. Are you chosen? Will you be selected? Will you be selected academically or financially or spiritually? John chapter 5 verse 1 to 4, it is called, it is called like, uh, Arabia, which is Aramaic, is called the uh, Bethesda. Um, you know, the Jewish people at that time, it is called mythology, Xinhua. Mythology, they believe one day, angel coming down from the heaven and stir the water. And when water is stirring, then one person from around the pool, he or she jump into the water. First person will be what? Healed. That is faith or belief they had mythology so people they heard about this story then those who been sick all days or enter their lives then one hope they had what is called healing physical healing that's why they don't care about working stay leave you know around it is called pull of a bethesda people they came with hope and they're in, it is called competition. But unfortunately, only one person will get healed, they believe. In this circumstance, situation, even here, verse 3, that here are a great number of disabled people used to lie. They lie. Who? The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Three types of people, they cannot walk, they'll run. They can run, even they can walk easily. But pretty much, they need some help from others to jump into the water. Definitely. And this place, what the uh, Jewish culture, interesting culture is this one. And you know, this is the, uh, it is called uh, uh, Jerusalem, you know, the temple. And uh, the red circle is the, the gate. The, you know, the people, they, uh, they are able access, you know, to the uh, the pool of Bethesda, 
But in this situation, there are two different social status people. This is today is a Bethesda. Can you believe this really small pool? But like um, here is the uh, what the you know the map instruction. This map is a uh, pretty in the, uh, the Bethesda pool today. And what they said, northern part and then southern part is it is a sud northern pool and southern pool. There are two uh, different you know, areas. Northern pool is the more uh, hierarchy, which is the hierarchy culturally, which means uh, the better status people, they are access, they are able to visit is over there, which means all the educated people, or maybe uh, some Pharisees or religious people, and the maybe high ranking social, social status people, they are able to visit here and then wash their face and then you know um, the, at least expecting God's miracles. But unfortunately, low-income people, poor people, blind and, and also sick people, they are able to visit only Southern Pole, not the uh, Northern Pole. So one, once again, Northern Pole is only pre privileged people, which means uh, educated, rich, you know, religious people. Southern Pole is what? Somehow only read on the poor, the uneducated, and it is called simple people, all the time being cursed. Guess what? Jesus, he visited not the northern pole, but the southern pole area. That is uh, what, um, you know, the theologian mentioned that. So, um, southern pole, dirty areas, what the, you know, the pole of Bethesda, it's like, you know, as you saw the, the picture, about six centimeter in place for the sacred uh, versus the sick and the curse, which means the northern and southern you know, area. And the untruth was the mythology, as I mentioned, competition exists. And seventh, Jesus visited Southern Pole on where? When? Sunday, actually, seventh. In the Bible, as I mentioned, the verse 5, uh, 4, for the angel went down at a certain season into the pole and troubled the water, and whosoever the first after the tra uh, traveling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever this is he had. And guess what? This is the uh, main story today. Southern Pole area, there are so many uh, diseased people, sick people. And one person called, it is called, uh, 38 years who been there and lying there, and no hope, hopeless person. Hopeless, hopeless. This person exactly had the same hope as a light in, a, in other people. And uh, we call maybe hopeless. This is my uh, age of 30. <laughs> uh, Daniel, now I'll give you chocolate later. So. Anyway, 이때가 언제냐면 uh, I just graduated uh, my uh, Fuller Theological Seminary, which is the uh, second ma master. Uh, first one is Master Divinity at APU, and uh, this one, the Fuller. My dad and my mom, that time was uh, about 60. Hangap uh, uh, After this one, guess what? A lot of 권사님들 at the church, actually, my churches, they start to ask this question all the time. When are you going to get married? Age 30, they start to ask this question. Marriage, marriage, marriage. Oh, come on. It's like all students, even the junior high and high school the students, they ask me, when are you going to get married? How old are you? I am age 31 because I'm so sweet. Baskin Robbins. <laughs> Best flavor. And then the, when I became age 33, then how old are you? I'm Jesus' age. I'm going to die. <laughs> so um, I all the time say reply back say, I got married don't you know that the person is Jesus then people laugh at me and all the time but seriously one, one of the days like, Kwon Sa Nim came to me and then oh, Jeon Dun Sa Nim I know someone uh, she really fit for you so my daughter's son is here but uh, I, you know don't tell my wife okay so um, <laughs> I, I kept telling my wife that uh, you 
I think seems like you had a lot of girlfriend, right? No way! I had never ever dated or go, went out. I, you're the only one, the first person. I all the time said that. Uh. <laughs> well, thank you. And so once again, after graduation of uh, this Fuller uh, Seminary, and then a lot of you know, and then 성도들 that they came to me, and then mar marriage. And one day, seriously, one 권사님 came to me, and then I know the right person for you. She lives in this place, so you should meet and visit there. Where? And the marriage is like New York from L.A., Los Angeles. Are you serious? So I said, yeah, you have to fly and then visit there and then meet her. Then you're going to fall in love. About six hours by flying, actually. From probably Korea to Hawaii, maybe. And I decided I meet her and then took the flight ticket. I fly I flew to the, uh, New York. I met her. Yeah, I did from LA. <laughs> Uh, and, and then the because uh, obedience actually obedience to God and also the Gonzalez said I kept saying that like all right and then she actually she finished the medical school and uh, be a doctor actually pretty soon looks good right uh, pretty rich and uh, okay uh, and when I met her first moment I felt boring oh. uh, I feel she's not my type. And I said, ah, I'm sorry, I have to say that. I was really bad, seriously. I was so picky. I really, um, you know, dumped a lot of girls. And, uh, <laughs> I was really a I was really simple person, even though I went to seminary, by the way. <laughs> even though I said, don't look at how pe people's their faces. But I did. So, um, anyway, went here and then met her. She really liked me, seriously. A like few, you know, like a uh, few days, uh, she kept asking me, like, going out. But, uh, like, I, I, I didn't have uh, any uh, heart. I mean, like, I didn't open my heart, actually. So, um, I decided, actually, you know, went back to L.A. And, uh, you know, she asked me, the Kwon asked me, How was it? How was the meeting? It was she really awesome, isn't it? No. Actually, uh, unfortunately, she, uh, she's, she's not my type. It's a blind dating. It was not good. And then a few weeks later, another Gwonsanim came to me and they showed her picture. And then, they, oh, she really, really, uh, really fits for you. And then you should meet her. Where? Here's her here. Las Vegas. Are you serious? And then, wh wh why should I have to go? And then, she's studying the uh, Las Vegas, actually, the, it is called the, uh, um, uh, I forgot the university, the hotel management. University of Las Vegas, actually. Uh, uh, University of Nevada. Nevada. Uh, she, yeah. Am I correct? UNLV. UNLV, okay. So, taking the, uh, the hotel management, and uh, she's working actually one of the big hotels as a manager. Ooh, it looks good, right? If I get married, then you know, all hotels free. Maybe uh, I have a, kind of a buffet, and then maybe a gambling. We have to do as a pastor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I have to say that. Anyway, so. Um, the Gwonsanim strongly recommend me to visit here every day, every day. So, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll go. And I drove about four hours wow. from wow. almost Seoul to Busan, and more than Busan actually, wow. maybe. Yeah, I visited actually. Um, is it 400 miles? Maybe, yeah. Maybe then Mitsu is about, about less than 600 you know, kilometer. So it's a really long distance. When I got here, I met her. What do you think? I fell in love? Really it's boring too. Yeah. This is not my time. Uh, but she liked me, by the way. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, it's like, you know, she kept asking me, the going out, so I'm, okay, all right. I met her a few times. I, I, I remember MGM Hotel, she was working, and then, and then um, you know, I visit there, okay, watching show. That's kind of, everything's boring, because I don't feel she's the right person. And blind dating, which means, like, this competition, I have to, even she needs to pick up some right person, but... I think the blind dating is not my style. That's what I learned. So, 
I became hopeless in marriage. <laughs> Which means uh, I decided, okay, I'm going to be single forever. <laughs> yeah, after having a lot of blind dating, seriously, they, and decided, okay, no more, no more, please, no more, no more, no more. I do have a special spiritual gift. It is called celibacy. Do you know what celibacy means? Being so long, forever. Like an apostle Paul. Yeah. If you have a celibacy, then I'll bless you, okay? I don't need man, I don't need woman. Bless you, God bless you, okay? All right. So, anyway, so, um, you know, after having a lot of, you know, blind datings, and then I became hopeless and came back to Korea and working at a church, actually. And then the, uh, I met, accidentally, one girl who opened the door and then she just came out and then I did this. <laughs> I, seriously, I did this. <laughs> and then, I was like, And then I thought, oh, she's the one. <laughs> I, seriously, I never ever said, any woman is like, she's the one. Yeah. So I start to want to know who she is, seriously. And then I research, you know, what she's doing. I mean, the, the, no, no, the same, same church, same church, same church, same church. Uh, you know, among the staff members, rosters, uh, what, what, what is she doing right now? And what is her age? And all. Oh, her age is pretty younger than you know, me. So about nine years or eight years, you know, uh, you know different. It's not much, okay? It's not much. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is the picture actually. Uh, our staff, uh, church staff, uh, we went to Jeju Island. And then the, um, I remember um, she had a boyfriend, by the way, at the time. So, uh, so I was, I feel like, okay, I'm in competition right now. So, all right, what am I supposed to do? So, like, you know, I figured out. Then I asked, how long you been dating? Like she said, about more than three years. Oh, oh really? Oh, three years. We went to Jeju Island, then I stopped by duty free in the shop, actually, duty free, right? Duty free. And then that, um, she was just hanging out, that step by did some kind of shop, right? And then uh, I think the, the Swarovski, I think. 그 귀걸이 하는데 있죠 여자도 좋아하잖아 그렇지? And then she saw the uh, one item, the earrings. <coughs> Swarovski, am I correct? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Swarovski. And the uh, one earrings, she pointed out, oh, how much is it? Get asked to the uh, cashier, and then uh, he heard about the price, and then they, I saw her uh, the face. Oh, kind of expensive. Oh, okay. I just after, <laughs> and, and then the, I just stare a long distance, and then. Oh, she just said, uh, left, gone, and then I just, you know, immediately went, oh. <laughs> and then, what, what, what was the, the, she pointed out that this, okay, all my, that this, okay, I'll buy this one. Immediately I spent. Oh. It was about uh, $200, I think. Uh, 200불 정도 된것 같아요. 한 30만원 가까이, 25만원? Of course, nothing, come on. It's like, it's like uh, nothing. So I bought it, this one, and, uh, after, after um, actually, this uh, Jeju Island uh, trip, it, this is the moment actually I actually asked her, um, Hyung Shi, I called her, Hyung Shi, uh, can we take a photo? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. And then, 이렇게 와갖고, 억지로 웃은 거야, 지금. 억지로, 억지로. It's like, she was, she was not willing to smile, but 억지로. 그리고 난 다음에, 며칠 있다가, uh, I actually, um, I actually uh, going out, dating, dating. And dating, and then I gave her, it is, it's like uh, the earrings. And she was really surprised. Oh, this is the point of, this is one of the item that I want to buy at the airport. Well, how do you know? Because I knew. <laughs> That's what I said. Because God told me. And I asked this question. Would you be, I'd like to go out, I mean, dating with you. Would you be willing? She said, kind of hesitating, and then, oh, date 좀 하고 싶은데 여자친구 되실 수 있습니까? 여자 나한테 여자친구 될수 있습니까? Boyfriend? 아내말 들어, I was 
I know she knew she had a boyfriend. I saw. It was she was hesitating. Okay, hesitating. So I said, uh, "Come on, come on." So I asked this question: "How's your relationship?" And she said, oh, "I'm struggling." Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a chance. Okay. Okay. I'll give you a chance. Okay. Think about. Think about. So uh, you know. And what I did every morning, I pick up actually every morning from Bundang to the Gangnam area. About I drove about more than an hour, and pick up, and then going to the uh, church another about thirty minutes. And then my mother-in-law actually uh, now is like her mom asked my my wife that, "Is Hadago why he pick you up in the morning? Because he's supposed to go this way, but why he came this way and go the different all the long you know driving he had." So he's kind of uh, she's really curious, but you know she found out maybe you know he you know, likes you. That's what you know, mom told you know my wife. Anyway, a few uh, you know months later, and then the um, you know she decided actually uh, she had a huge fighting with the boy you know, boy boyfriend. I said I encourage her. Okay, so um, to think about your life and make the right choice and the right decision. And then uh, I remember the day, the moment she made the final decision, and I was on the phone about more than about three or four hours, and uh, talking, encouraging her, and then praying. She decided, okay, and then break up. So she broke up. Polly, are you okay? Yeah. Okay, I, I feel like you. Oh, okay, I, I thought that you're gonna give a birth or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, so um, you know, after that, when she told me, "Yes, I'm going to go out as a boyfriend," I remember this movie I watched. You may not know this movie, Ghost, 1990, and this kind of—I I, I don't want to kind of uh, encourage you guys, but it's kind of new age movie. But a lot of new age movies we do have, but. You know, they actually fall in. You know, they actually uh, love each other. And uh, let me explain quickly, okay? But PG-13, okay? PG-13. But a lot of some, a lot of kiss scenes and like you know, parts. But anyway, Demi Moore, Demi Moore is she, really, she was popular, but not anymore. But uh, Patrick Swayze, I think he still that alive. He died, right? Five years ago, yeah. And he was he's so talented person, dance, good at dancing, performing. Is really handsome and actually the um, uh, I'm not gonna spoil the movie, but um, you know somehow he got killed by someone, and it was an accident actually. It was an accident, and then somehow he was not his spirit still alive, and then you know hanging out the, the what is called you know living staying with you know uh, her uh, his so you know girlfriend. All the time, but it, as a spirit, even though he touch anyone's body, but he's not penetrate all the time. And then the uh, the girlfriend cannot see absolutely, but only the few people can see that. It's really interesting. Maybe demon possession, maybe. Maybe I'm sorry. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> anyway, so in this part, and the, the uh, trying to demonstrate, I'm with her right now. How? How? You is called Penny. The girl, she's you know tears. It's like come up with the uh, confession, which is that my boyfriend is still alive. The same thing. I felt that okay. Wow, she said yes. I could hang out, and um, I feel really uh, really loved. And so uh, this is the, the dating moment, and then uh, you know. This is when I was 33 years old. Yes, she broke up with her boyfriend. Yes, she did. Yeah. So uh, those who still are struggling with the uh, your boyfriend girlfriend, but uh, they have a boyfriend girlfriend, uh, have a faith <laughs> in the future. That's it. <laughs> in the future. By the way, so um, this is the hotel actually. Um, how I propose actually? Gangnam. Yeah, Gangnam. Here in the intercontinental, and this is the. Uh, the last is here, the top. Here's the restaurant actually. I research a lot of restaurants actually. Um, whenever I, not right now, but you know, whenever I, we have datings, I all the time research. Boys, 
Remember this one, okay? <laughs> all right. So whenever I visit any restaurants, all the time, um, actually make the re appointment, reservation actually first. Reservation, it is important. And where? Right next to windows. Wow. The windows all the time, so, okay? And I actually spoke to the manager the, the day before I visited actually. And then uh, I gave, who's the manager here today? I said, okay, tomorrow, who is it? Then I give him a little bit small tips, and then I come back tomorrow here at this time. Please treat us well, and uh, you know, give us more special, you know, nice. And all the time, what I did, this is the what I treat her, and I decided, okay, about uh, we, we had about dating not that long, about six months actually, and six months I decided I'm gonna get married. So after six months, I decided, yeah, six months proposing. So this is the, you know, proposing how I researched a lot of the hotel restaurants and this is a perfect site. So I visited here again and then I met the manager and with this one, uh, some money that, that he could purchase the flowers, uh, flowers and the ring. Ring is the, I, I didn't give to him, but the flower he prepared and then the, one of my friends I, today maybe as a tech pay deliver, maybe uh, I asked him, you could deliver the, the, the ring on this, this time. So, um, you know, I drove, uh, the, that day actually uh, I drove the, um, the, my car and then my, ask, my, my, my uh, girlfriend asked me, uh, where are we heading toward? Oh, we're going to have a denjangjigae. That's what I said. <laughs> she really likes the uh, somehow denjangjigae or, uh, what is it? What is it? Gukbab, gukbab, chokbal, but I really like the Italian restaurants, some you know steak, but she loves actually kamchatang and some you know kimchi jjigae, like something like that. Do you like it? Uh -huh. Let me give you maybe out of topic, but let me give you a tip, maybe bad tip. Uh, if you have a hangout, 목욕 좀 발라야 되겠다 여기. 목욕 좀 발라. 가서 저희 가서 목욕 좀 달라. Uh, give you a tip. If you think that a uh, man and the, the boy and the, the girl is not your type, then immediately when you go to college, immediately you said, let's go to Chinese restaurant and have jajangmyeon. Okay? And then show them how to eat, have an ugly eating style, like <laughs> and, and then another restaurant is the chicken. The chicken, like yangnyeom chicken. Like, <laughs> Then, then all the you know like with yang yam on your faces, and then jadang yam faces, and then the, right next to the, your da da dating person that hates you. Okay, they're not gonna ask you. Let's go out like that way. Anyway, and then the you know proposal time. Uh, you know, uh, we, I was driving. Of course, definitely here. Place and my wife kept asking. This is not the place. You know, I mean the the direction we go to the uh, what's called the uh, denjang place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got lost. I got lost, and I can lie to her. And, then, and I park here. Okay. Okay. You know what? Okay. Well, let's let's have dinner here. Okay. I, I'm kind of tired, so I, I I don't like the uh, the dinner. Uh, that's good. Don't don't get don't, okay. uh, so selfish, right? I, I feel like I'm really rich, but you know. Anyway, you know, it's a piece of cake. Don't worry, don't worry. Like you know, each <laughs> man, no problem, no problem. Okay. So uh, we, uh, you know, went to the elevator. Guess what? Before we uh, arrived, the uh, this last, you know, floor, the top floor, and then manager waiting for us right in front of the elevator. And when the elevator is open, then the guy, the spa, Sonim, 기다리셨습니다. I'm been waiting for. Him. And then my wife is just kind of surprised. Well, what is it? Well, um, um, nothing. It's like, you know, <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> and then they took us to the uh, windows, like the table area, and the nice view, and wow. I never knew that Seoul is so beautiful at the time. Like, anyway, I was like, and we didn't order, but food automatically like, automatically comes to the uh, serving, you know, to the table. Then my wife's surprised. I didn't order. Why food is coming? Like, oh, I'm done right, all right. Like, I, I, it's on me, it's on me. It's on me. And then everything's like appointed and prepared. <coughs> and while having food, and suddenly the manager brought the flower. Wow. And then the, actually the, someone you know, gave to you. So, Who was? And you right in front of the person. And then me. And then she was kind of surprised and impressed. And a few minutes later, my friend, he came as a delivery person 
여기 이민호 분 누구세요? 이민호 씨, 어, 줘요. 어, 뭐한 선물 왔습니다. And then small mini box. And then he gave to me. And just got it. And get on my knees. Open the diamond ring box. Honey, would you marry me? What do you think she said? Yes, with tears. 여자는 로맨틱에 약해요. 로맨틱에 약해. 무대. Anyway, I still remember this location, how I proposed her. And then we got married. And uh, uh, we went to Hawaii as a honeymoon. It was a really beautiful location. That's the. Uh... <laughs> Lois, I'm <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, so after marriage, um, you know, God gave us uh, two kids, and Lois, at this time, about age five, Joseph just born, and uh, you know, it was a beautiful picture, and uh, and another picture, uh, uh, she has a big mouth. And it was the, uh, I remember it was the, uh, one of her, I think one of her person's birthday actually. And uh, it's out, out back, it's in the steakhouse. Uh. And this is the, uh, it's Ira, actually Ira. Yeah, Ira, yeah, Ira, and then, you know, we hang out with each other. Guess what? Uh, this is a picture, 2007, uh, 2007? 17, 17, 17, Joseph's face with the class of 2020. All right. It was a it's a VI no Vips Vips area. We had actually Mr. John and Pauline went here, and he joined as a kaktuki here. Like you know, he had uh, this food, and guess what? Today he took the same pose. Anyway, you know that's really interesting face all the time. And uh, Joseph had a girlfriend 2022. He broke up. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I know it's like I, I, I talk about a lot of things, but you know, the point is this one, guys. I went through competition for marriage. Once again, blind dating, and I flew to the uh, New York, Las Vegas, many locations, even Seoul, but there are not many people who fit my kind of type. Or I was selfish, maybe. But, you know, I was, when I gave up my all the personal desires, I keep saying that, I keep saying that I'm homeless, which means humble in marriage. Somehow God sent really good, right person into my life. So, um, the reason why I'm telling you this one, guys, we are in the competition today, in this school, your life, like a Bethesda situation. And when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Let's imagine this picture. Now you're in competition and you're lying down as a sick person and those who need some help from others. Why? Because one day your life will get better like a stirring the water and then if you jump into the water as a first person, then you'll be victorious, the winner, and what? Successful person. We do have this mythology and hope. Everyone, a lot of people today, they're running, chasing the money, college, ranking driven, your name driven, as the first person, achiever, maximizer. We do have this hope. But other people, hopeless. A lot of people, they do not have any opportunities. Somehow Jesus absolutely knew this reality. He didn't go to the northern pole area, but southern pole area to meet the people who need more Jesus Christ. And he asked this question, do you want to get well? Which means what? Do you want to experience, do you want to experience miracles? or message healing from me, Jesus Christ. And then he said, what he said, what the reply, the blind said, I, the, the sick person, I have no one to help me. 
interesting is this one. There are so many like people probably visiting here and the link down here. Everyone's selfish. Everyone, they don't care about others, only me. Guess what? What about you and I? In this competition right now, are you willing to see other people? Or only you, your family members? And somehow, right next person said, there's no one, help me. Help me. We call out ourselves as what, Christians, but somehow, we often only look at ourselves as what it is called selfishness. In this situation, Jesus came to the pool area and then he just what reached out his hand. The person who'd been there about 38 years. And what he replied that, he said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And he picked up his mat and walked. This is the next question. The day on which this took place was a what? Seventh, which is what? Sunday, Jewish traditional restrict day. You cannot do anything. It is called, I think I remember, Mr. Lee, uh, he mentioned about this one in his message part. 39 regulations times six, about 234, you know, like uh, policies, which is the rules not to do on Sabbath, they do have. No more than 92 a meter, even they cannot walk. So, a lot of restriction laws on, on Sunday, which is Sabbath, they had, they believe, but Jesus, He came on Sunday, Sabbath, He broke the law and healed and touched the, those who need help. Because what? Glory of God. Glory of God. And what Jesus said, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat. Uh, he, he is a, what, a sick person. The man who made me well and said to me, and pick up your mat and walk. That's what he, he experiences. Let me finish up with these two main themes today. In competition, in this story, we learn about, about 2,000 years ago, more, you know, situation, even 2,000 years from right now, later. We are in competition, wherever you go. A different types of competition. But this story, the person, sick person, about 38 years, being uh, laying down over there, and met Jesus, and what happened? Changed his life. Turning point. Completely changed his life. Now how? And then, what we need that, after that, he just shared his story with others. Which means what? Better physical condition. He could walk right now. Now he could talk right now. Now he could share the life of the more vital, it is called gospel, which is what? Jesus Christ. I believe it is called prime time. He's going to have the rest of you know, life. Young people, even teachers, including myself, we consider ourselves as pretty young, or I have a lot of potentials, Yes, it is cold. But the honest word is this one, guys. You are now in prime time in your life. Your age, your bodies, your mindset, your abilities, your talents, your knowledge. There's such great, precious gifts that you could use whatever you want. That's why a lot of people go to Hagwon. That's why a lot of people stay up until 2 a.m. They want to use their prime time for achieving... A, what, what is it? Their success, their personal goals. Then let me ask this question. What about you and me? Now we are in prime time as a what? The person, maybe a student and teachers. And what would you do at this time? John chapter 12, verse 11. There's one story. The lady, the Mar Mary, gave his really expensive perfume and then pour out the fit of the other uh, Jesus guess what today a lot of the theologians mentioned that the price of the, um, the oil is about three thousand dollars which means uh, more than some wow. then she pour out on the fit of Jesus and the wash with her hair 
And in this situation, a lot of theologians mentioned that. Why she did it? Because of uh, um, Nazareth. Do you know Nazareth? Nazareth, right? He was alive from the dead. Jesus performed the miracles. And then Nazareth was a brother of the Mary. She's so thankful. And willing to give most valuable thing and to Jesus Christ to worship him. And what the Bible said, in this one, the situation, Judas Iscariot, which is what? One of the disciples, as an observer, said, who soon betrayed him, said, that perfume was worth of a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. In terms of a secular perspective, which means a non-Christian perspective, he was right. More than $3,000 just one time pour out on maybe 30 part of fit of the, our bodies, what? It's a waste of money. He could have used that money for helping others. Why? But what Jesus re react is quite a different way. What he said, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. And in other words, Judas, leave her alone. Mary, she knows what the most important thing is in this moment. $3,000 is nothing. Why? I am the person you have to worship me. I am the person who's going to die for all those people, their sins. That's why Mary knows the most important valuable things. Prime time, which is the most important valuable thing she gave to Jesus Christ. Today, I'd like to wrap up the sermon with this picture, guys. Jesus, before he died, he washed Jesus disciples fit which is the dirtiest parts as it's actually masters is really really um, with surprising behaviors actually but then all the disciples said why you did this one don't 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 do not but Jesus he demonstrated this is my best you know the demonstration how to serve how to you know, worship the Lord and he died for us on the cross one of my friends, Japanese friends, his name is Kimi Yoshikudo. He and I, we uh, studied uh, together in the States and uh, finished about Master of Divinity at the uh, Pacific University. And I, when I uh, was about age 20, uh, I'm sorry, at 25, I visited actually Tokyo and uh, met his father. His father was serving the church, you know, Japanese church, it's really small, about 1%, less than 1% Christian population Internation in Japan. And small churches. The biggest church is about 200, 300 people. Church members. And the average church members is about less than 14. Majority church pastors are living not the, their own houses, just you know, church houses as of their home. And one day, Kimi, uh, Pastor Kimi called me and texted me that my father has passed away. There's no hesitation. To purchase a you know booking the uh, flight ticket, I I did it. I flew to the uh, Tokyo and participated in uh, the funeral service. It was uh, I was at age thirty and I met the parents uh, in L. A. I treat them uh, the Korean food, and then I participated as a uh, funeral service. And the mom now she cannot walk. It's pretty much you know, old and age eighty and you know, lean on the wheelchair and the sister getting old and then uh, I met the, um, the mom she was sitting and then she was really surprised because I came from Korea so I I visit her and then encourage her then what I said I still remember your husband what he did for me and what he did has done you know, for your country as a pastor I still respect I did I really, really respect because uh, he spent his entire prime time as a commitment for Jesus Christ. 
I realized I knew that the story from Kimi, my friend, that his father spent more than 40 years as a pastor and then gave this message as a legacy, life less teaching legacy to his children. Let me read it. The greatest wish a father has for his four children. He also wishes that the children love God, love their neighbors. He hopes they live by loving God and their neighbors. That's the path, path to the happy life, what please God the most. And that's what the father believes in and lived by. Pastor Kudo Oki, Okitoshi, he didn't give a lot of money to his parents and his children. He didn't give a lot of possession or name to his children. He spent his prime time life you know, for Jesus Christ and gave his great faith as a legacy to his children, which they always remember and follow and respect. And this is the church. He sacrificed his entire life about with previous pastor, which is a, he's a third generation, the third, the pastors of the senior pastor of this church, and they save money and money, money, but more than 70 years, 70 years, and they build up a church without any bank loans. I was surprised. Japanese church pastors, they all the time consider ch church building, there must be no debt. Why? This is a holy temple. Holy temple. <coughs> Young people, today, now we are we're living a lot of you know, college, uh, college things. As I mentioned this one, college is looking for these four areas. Demographics, where you're from, your race, your personal background, your culture, your financial, your parents' education level, your academic performances, spirituality, which is the, uh, your leadership, your community service. Last one is the community you belong, how you uh, make the contributions. This is secular view, views, guys. We're heading toward somehow achieving, pleasing four areas. We are in competition to achieve this one to be the better person according to secular world uh, education. And let me ask this question. What about biblical perspectives, Christian perspectives? Now, we are in the um, Christian, which is the um, you know, Christian perspectives then. We studying the, um, at the uh, Christian school. Then last three days, you observe some students bother you. He, why he's doing this one? Why are you sitting here? Why are you speaking like this way? Why so weird? And we treating people as our strangers, even though we call ourselves as Christians. Why are you hypocrites all the time? Two faces, lying too much, treating badly. You don't do what you said. Somehow, it is hard to practice, demonstrate what Jesus taught us, even learn from the Bible. But this is the really real story today, even in this community, JCS. There is no one help me in my life, school life. Have you heard this one? If yes, then we got to think about our main purpose of our school and main purpose of Christian life. Even though we are in competition, Jesus, He wants to come to you in this place. He doesn't want to treat you. He respects your high intellectual knowledge. He doesn't select you because what? You're smart and handsome, you're rich. You're maybe rich, educated parents. It's not. He selects you with His unconditional love. And He wants to share 
Iskowat's demonstration how to love your neighbors and others. They share the gospel. And here, everyone said, believe, faith, not mythology. <coughs> Jesus will come. It is called faith, not seeing, but you believe. Not touching, you believe. Not any observing, but you believe in confidence. It is called faith. And what? The man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. When Jesus comes to your life, my life, our mindset, our perspective, and all the words, papers, it is called transformation. Transformation. I want to encourage you guys. Our school, one of our main goals is we want to send you out to the world, even the, uh, you know, any locations. And I want to encourage you guys. A lot of people, they want to experience Jesus Christ through your life. That is the main goal. Maybe study, that's what we need to heart. Maybe you're a Christian in life, that's why you need to be more faithful. People, they need this one. Helper. They need this moment experience of God God chose you and I as this witnesses and messengers that's why we are gathering here today that's why we are gathering here and we are about to leave tomorrow go to the world secular world and tell the world about Jesus Christ I hope that you're going to experience Jesus Christ not the, in the pull of the Bethesda in your life in competi competitive situations and circumstances in this situation all the time you are going to share the gospel with other people let's pray